any public comment? If you'd like to make a comment, feel free to come stand at the podium, share your name and address. I want agenda to read before the public comment. Okay. Uh, we're going to add item 5.1 to this evening, motion to approve Sarah Parbacher as an English teacher at the high school for the 2017-18 school year. The salary and benefits are for the CBFT CBA. Sarah Farbacher. Thank you. All right. Uh, any public comment? I'll just ask the last one. <coughs> no? Okay. We'll move it into the superintendent's report. It, um, a couple of things tonight. Uh, <coughs> most notable, I want to make the board aware that we are. Um, very closely watching enrollment, particularly at the primary school at this point. Um, we are going to have to do something uh, related to positions with the uh, set number of sections at the kindergarten level. Um, we currently have 289 registered kindergartens. We were slated to have 14 sections of kindergarten. Um, we really need to have 15 sections. So we are looking internally what options we have that do not require that higher additional staff. Um, but that would be you know, shifting programs or something of that nature. We've talked about that previously, possibly uh, <coughs> how we uh, instruct Spanish at the primary school as an option. Um, but that will only cover one position. Um, if, if we add that position, we are still borderline for a second position because of class sizes. Right now, 289 kids, you divide that by 14, that gives you 20.64 kids. We generally kept our kindergarten classes under 20. Now, board policy will allow you to go higher, and there's no state law on class size, but if you've been with little kids, class size is very important. So uh, I, I don't think we want to let this escape us. Um, and then uh, also in the second grade, there are currently 276 kids, and we are currently scheduled at 12 sections. That means there's 23 kids per classroom. We don't like to go over 23 kids in a second grade classroom. So we are right on that line, and it, it, you know, it's July 25th here. So, uh, that's possibly an additional add. So we're, we're watching very carefully, but um, I won't be surprised if we need to add some elementary teachers before the summer is out. Now, August is always an interesting month because you do have families who have moved and not yet sent the records of the school district, so maybe we'll get some you know, balance out of that. Uh, but also we tend to get, the week before school, we get new students to show up. So anyways, I just want to put this on everyone's radar to know that we did a very tight budget. Um, <clears throat> and enrollments are, are going to be a key driver with, with this one. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, so in terms of considerations, uh, do we, the monetary consideration and the space consideration, can you just speak to that for a moment in terms of what you're thinking in terms of, of how we would address well, we, have the we do have a classroom space available, so uh, Julie planned uh, continuing to utilize it if necessary. So we tell the kindergarten was bigger to start here, so she, she has rooms already pre-designated to be additional classrooms if, if necessary. Uh, as far as getting staff in place, um, we're fortunate we start after Labor Day this year, but I would think that the August 8th meeting we would have to give the elementary administrator some direction on how we plan to deal with the moment if we were to uh, address it by the start of school, if we see this as a trend. If we see um, people signing out and transferring to other schools, which is very possible, then it, it, it might not require an adjustment. But again, if the trend continues as is, we have to, we have to do it. And how many kids do we typically have in the first grade class? So we have like 20.64, you said it was kindergarten, 23 was second grade. We've done 22 and 23 before. The first grade. Ideals 22. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, yeah, okay, the other piece I'm going to uh, share tonight with you is um, we have our, um, what I'm going to call our projected PSSA scores. These are not the uh, state's tabulations, this is our tabulations and individual data files for the um, uh, past year. So we've got those scores, and we're usually pretty close, but there's kids that are excluded, included, things of that nature. So. Um, walk through these with you as well. Um, I'm not ready to pass them off because it could be wrong. So that's why I'm not going to post to the website or anything that nature. Uh, but most notably, uh, <coughs> I passed Chester one more, but 
<laughs> but, uh, it doesn't have science on here, but um, I'll walk through it anyways. Sorry. Um, you'll see the column with a couple red lines on it. That's the current 2017 scores. And I did a difference to 2016, so you can see right, the difference, so you can see what went up or down uh, comparatively. Um, this is, hang on, I'll give you the right one, I apologize. But we calculate it. It's different. So, the first one I gave you is just wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I apologize. Changed a couple of times. Again, that's what it projects. This is a sign from the end of the Most notably, we've been watching, let me jump to sixth grade now, because that's the that's not highlight reel. We've got a lot of emphasis on sixth grade math. You'll see sixth grade went up by 13.1%, seventh grade went up by 9.9%, eighth grade went up by 7.7%. So, um, a good start. We've still a lot, a lot of ground to cover. We want to work on there, but we are making some strides. You'll see the last column. I, I tried to capture for you a trend line compared to the base. If you remember, we switched to Common Core, we made a big talk about that. And so are we going up or down compared to that basic switch? And you'll see just about everything is with the exception of eighth grade science. Um, we have some, non, some ideas on why that occurred, but we'll let like the um, curriculum leaders and principals at some point present the more detailed analysis of why they did that, what they could rectify that. Um, but overall, um, pretty, a pretty good year for us in many respects. Um, probably a little surprise that fifth grade math was I would call stagnant or slightly down there. <clears throat> the fifth grade EF, really, I apologize. Slightly down there. Anything else really, uh, you know, you get a 9% gain in fourth grade math and uh, a great gain in uh, sixth and seventh grade in particular. It was a good year overall. So, anyways, these are projections. I'm waiting for the state to give us their calculations. It's not, it's not so, uh, but this is where I think we can find it. Yeah, Julie, sorry, I, I don't think you probably have a copy of this. Maybe we can uh, we'll send it to you electronically. Uh, after, after Great, thank you. Yep. Yeah, unless, I don't know. Does anyone have questions on this? So I have a couple of questions. Uh, so obviously it looks like the largest gain has happened in the 6th, 7th, 8th grade math area. Fourth grade. And 4th grade. So, what can we attribute those gains to? And then secondly, I mean, if you look at it compared to the actual percentages, those are probably the lowest percentages out of all the other grades and subjects. Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we, um, what do our students need to really get to where we should be? Well, first of all, six, seven, eighth grade math across the entire state drop. They all drop significantly. They're all, all, all relatively depressed. Um, I, I mean, I attribute 6th and 7th grade the time, but I think IFL math, uh, particularly the instructional trainers they brought in, uh, really made a difference in those subject areas. Um, Vicki, who you met, came in and presented in uh, January. Okay. Um, who used the word intense? Would be grab. She provides intense professional development, and the teachers bought in. I, I, I think that's really you know, what happened and why, why they had the gains they did, plus they had time to work on it. And so it was a significant investment of time. So I, I think what you need to do to keep that going, I think you need to commit to the IFL and mathematics. Um, and I think you need to commit more time uh, for those teachers, not to be away from but to commit the time to be working together. So one of the biggest impactful things that they did was they went to each other's classrooms and critiqued each other. With, a, with someone from IFL there coaching them on how to critique each other and have feedback. And I, I think that's why you're seeing the gains that you are. Um, you know, ELA, I, I think that there are some material transitions that the IFL was working on with both the middle school and the uh, <coughs> kids school. Um, I just met with Jill and uh, Dr. Bixel and Ms. Ms. Hoff today, and they seem very, very committed to ELA work there. Um, Ms. Hoff is working on the intervention schedule to the kids school because she uh, intervention schedule isn't meeting the needs of the students, so she's working on that uh, at the time that she, she sees is necessary and we're going to go on that. So 
the raw sort of things. And again, these are great signs and like uh, dissect them. So the six type is the highest. So was that um, was any of that related to double math? Oh yeah, the six and seventh grade probably that doesn't have that Eighth grade did not have double math, they only had IFL. How do those games compare to an average game in the year? Is it hard for us to part so? We we generally have not had double digit gains or, or upper digit gains. You know, a big year for us was three, four percent. It was a big year. <laughs> we hit 13. That great. That's big. Um, you know. So what happens when we go back to one period of math? Well, not all kids are going back to right, just we're, we're, we're differentiating the right. kids' needs. So I'm hoping we continue to have the game because the kids we only need one piece of we're trying to push more math into science too, which you know is a solution to be there as well. So just to my general question, I'm observation for two cents is that you know I'd love to see our students do better in math just from the baseline and, and where we are. Obviously the, the increase um, is in the right direction. It's a good first step. It is a good first step. So um, I think figuring out what that process needs to look like to get us to the next step. I know we started to take those steps, right? Yeah, this was year two of the curriculum, which which helped. I, I I really believe the teacher's commitment, the professional level in trying things really made a big difference. I, you know, I, I, the time of course is a factor, but you know, if you just do more of the same, you're, if you just do more of the same, you're going to get the same. So something else changed besides time. And so that when they change, try, change their instructional strategies, I, you know, I, I see that as the game. Yeah. You can see in our learning walks that people you know, how engaged with the teachers are and trying different things and sharing resources and ideas. I can see it in all of them. After three years, I've seen my daughter. <laughs> I mean, I can see the big difference from the lower one, sorry, from things like the younger ones, like the now, right? I mean, it's things like that. Yeah, some of them are trouble here. Oh. Would you mind repeating yourself? Uh, I, I definitely see um, it's night and day. I mean, just from home, uh, my daughters are three years apart, uh, seeing the older one come through and then seeing the younger one come through, just different philosophies and teaching and things like that. Um, you definitely can see a difference, absolutely. <clears throat> I, I don't disagree with that at all because I, I, I told this about the primary school line as well. I think one of my focuses would be consistency through buildings, right? So the amount of rigor that we're talking about that we saw at the primary school a change from the curriculum and, and perhaps the leadership or whatever, the, the teaching styles. Translate you left. Through so all Scott the and Kara, yesterday we worked on our statement of operational intent. This is what the administrators take, what we see going on the data. Our strategic plan. But what came up with all those meetings? What was what was the thing that kept coming up on all this? It's a high priority item. Consistency. Consistency. So it was. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, 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 not just building the building. We see classroom to classroom. Right. Right. That's not a challenge too. Right. So I can see that. Yeah. Okay. And when with the actual data? October. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I was trying trying to get out as you know ahead of it to you know pulse, but right. yeah, that it's. You know, some years it's September, some years it's October, some years we get an email because they didn't like what they saw, but they're trying to re <laughs> reframe it all. So, but, uh, okay. that's all I got. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, <clears throat> all right, so uh, the next item is approval of the minutes, and uh, there were the minutes of June 13th and June 22nd posted. Uh, online and um, are there are there any comments or questions? And I know I know this is the first month without Nick here, right? I, I'm not sure if these were his last minutes or not. I'm assuming it's probably done by uh, someone else who's trying to help fill in and be. Kelly Mannering has always done the minutes, but Nick has always proofread the minutes. Okay. So I'm not sure if proofread uh, them. Nick didn't That's fine. So. Um, there were a couple corrections 
that uh, I wanted to address, and then James Stevenson, who's going to be here tonight, also shared some of his comments. So uh, the one thing I did want to ask for clarification on actually both minutes uh, in regards to the budget. So we had a, a very robust conversation about the budget on both occasions where we talk about how the excess from last year was being transferred to this year, and we talked about what the specific numbers were as they related to the general fund balances. And some of that detail wasn't included in the minute. So if we could just recapture some of that, I think it would be helpful from um, a documentation perspective for those who may not have been part of those discussions can understand our thought process as to where we are as a district in terms of our budget and why we did what we did. I mean, I'm Yeah, I mean, I, hopefully the recording should, should yeah. indicate that was what, what, what was discussed. The other two comments that um, Mr. Stephen asked, Stevenson asked me to iter reiterate or share was one in regards to the energy discussion. This relates to the June 13 minutes. So uh, he indicated that we talked about goals, meeting the goals, and potential impacts, and that there was a fairly lengthy discussion on this and um, we'd like that documented in the minutes. And then on June 22nd, uh, in relation to, uh, I believe Mr. Kaczynski had shared some of his thoughts in regards to uh, financial aspects and uh, Mr. Stevenson indicated that he had provided additional comments related to academics, construction, and finance. And, um, we like those after the reflection as well. Yep. Any other comments, changes? Just one note, um, just making sure the language is correct and bring that forward in the prior year. We did budget a loss in the prior year. So that's a fair point, right? You're not was... bringing excess funds forward. We asked, we're hoping that we broke even for that okay. this year. So yeah. you're not bringing extra funds forward. You're hoping that your loss with less. Right. <clears throat> no, fair point. And that should be reflected in the discussion right. that was part of what was reported last time. Would you be agreeable if we had asked the presentations as I presented? I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, and I think we, I think as a matter of course the best practice is as we're having these discussions and their handouts, we should just automatically include them as part of the minutes uh, to, to add color around the conversation. Okay, so um, if everyone is in agreement with that approach with the suggested recommendations or changes, requested changes, uh, would there be a motion to approve the minutes for June 13th and June 22nd of 2017? So, thank you. Jack, second. Okay, so moved. Second. Okay, so All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, informational agenda, uh, solicitor's report. Uh, no report this evening. Uh, education Foundation? There's no what is there? Uh, <coughs> Pathfinder. Mr. Uh, we didn't have a board meeting. Um, so, I mean, we did have some summer work that was done. They stopped over, looked at it, inspected it, and signed off on some bills. But everything was on budget. We set a summer in, in a goal and budget for improvements. And, so Parkway, that would be me. Uh, there was no July meeting, so nothing to report. We have a meeting in August. Shasta? Nothing to report. Nothing to report, yeah. <laughs> Some meetings. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, finance committee report. We were mopping over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that is one report in this section. I can find an answer for you. Um, we were doing so some IKM billings. Uh, everything looks standard as well as the PJ Dick billings to review them briefly. Um, PSI will re review billings. We do have some questions regarding some add on slip for asbestos monitoring. Um, I think Dr. White was going to get the PJ Dick to review those costs to see if they were part of our project, um, if it was uh, accounted for as part of the project, and if not, it was not included in budget, um, budget cost, why was it not? And that was it. 
And where some, uh, Mr. Kuczynski, where some of the, um, I'm just looking at what's on the percentage on that, and maybe this is a question for later, but some of those, uh, I'm going to assume invoices. I'm just trying to see if any of the findings, financial matters on the percentage of the required finding is pretty good. So, was it going to be Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll address it in the second Great, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Does anyone have questions or specific items in the consent agenda? All right, so I, I do have a couple questions, um, Dr. White. So 5.1. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, we'll um, so this is a run by the Allegheny Intermediate. It's, it's a whole host of uh, electronic resources school districts can choose to offer. What well, you're approving is the cost agreement should the district choose to use them over the course of the year. So these are different programs together. They purchase it at a bigger volume than we would ever purchase individually. So should we choose to use it, we get, we get it at a better rate. Um, we have to these different venues on the and we do use some of them sometimes, other ones we do not use. So it just um, allows us to have any things necessary. That's uh, that is fun. Uh, two, just a quick question. Um, and this this might be a bit of a wording semantics question, so apologies. Yeah, no, please, because I was. Uh, this is right, no, and I think that's great because we should probably talk about this just generally around the table because this is a result of a discussion item that we talked about at the last board meeting in terms of how some of these motions were uh, worded or brought uh, forth on the agenda. And in this instance, it says, you know, the motion obviously is motion to approve the employment actions in the July 2017 Human Resources Report as recommended by the superintendent, and the report is attached. And so, I, do you want to talk to the report? Yeah, the, well, in your the example. Share, so, yeah. the idea is this is on public access as well, that we'll keep the report format the same every month. Because previously, if you go keep our agenda, you'd have two resignations, three hirings, a substitute gets hired, then you're back to a couple resignations, whatever. Chronologic order things happened in HR, that's how they came. Our thought is this would provide a consistent format month to month, and really by the end of the year, you'd have an annual report part of it on the chart by just what happened. So that would arise the same time. So that's simple. Now, the anomaly, and you know, when we create a summary report for the end of the year, is just like tonight, we hired a teacher. So we had to hire that, add that on because I, the thought is I don't, once I pass this out, before the board, I don't want to amend the report because you'll miss it. You will know not change it. So I think once that report goes out, it's got to say stagnant, and then anything additional would have to be added as an individual item to the agenda like the time. That's process wise. Mm -hmm. Help us through the system. Great. And so we say put human resources recommendation. So just wording human resources, what? area is that because if you look at the motion underneath it does say as recommended by the superintendent so just trying to understand is it just a wording it could be just a wording semantics in terms of it's really the recommendation of the superintendent well i was trying to or i could say employment employment you're talking about recommendations yeah concerning human resources right that's fine yeah. 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 because i wasn't sure it's like it it sounds like human right. resources department right right they make yeah, versus the superintendent. Right. Okay. So along those lines, I'll just share one of um, Mr. Stevenson's other comments <coughs> related. It goes back to sort of how these uh, motions are worded. And for some of the other items, maybe 5.1, I'm, I'm going to speak for him for a second here. Perhaps that would also be one where it was recommended by either the superintendent or whether it's the IT area, the tech area that were deeded and said, hey, we should do this or not. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't mind doing that, but if you if you click on electronic school board on any of the uh, items, 
when you open the item, it says item recommended by on the bottom. So it already says recommended, but if you want them to verbiage, I'm fine with that too. If you, you just wish a consistent file. Or or you could say just sort of yeah. and recommend group. Yeah. You know, or I, I could just put on the consent agenda. The consent agenda is recommended by superintendent. Yeah. 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 Um, so we use all those companies for service matters. So what happens is we put out a list of products that we intend to bid, we intend to put out. And companies from all over the place look at that list and say, well, you know, these 25 items I'm going to bid on. These 14 items I'm going to bid on. These two items I'm going to bid on. And then our business office has to sort all these bids and determine who's the lowest, which is things this is how it lines up. So, and that's part of the public law when you know, get to this. <coughs> Was that reviewed by the five point six or not? Was five point six, that's one I was gonna say. Five point six was the one I was looking for, yeah. yeah. And what is the process now taken without Nick's involvement on the construction related invoices? It's invoices. Kim's yeah. reviewing them and she's bringing the media review and then she's highlighting discrepancies. She can those were the finest to me, but she was down to a, a couple pennies on something that she Seem right, so she, she's doing good at all this. Uh, they did a really nice job. And I think uh, she's, she's clarifying some stuff. And she is willing to come to the board meetings. I didn't know if you wanted her here or not, so that's a question for you. I probably know that. Uh, I didn't know if you wanted to hear a place. I did ask her to be at the finance committee, and uh, she's willing to be here in the short term or long term, wherever the board feels necessary. And then can I just ask for a quick, um, you know, sentence or two on 5.7 through 5.10? The payment from NRG through Yeah, so um, NRG, uh, Curtailment Services, is a uh, group that helps deal with energy reduction <clears throat> on days when there's a high spike in energy needs, so it's getting hot outside. They'll send me an emergency notice saying, could you reduce your usage today and they measure how much we reduce by. So we, in the past, and we haven't been able to do it at the high school, what we've done is we throw a couple switches at 2.30 when the office staff is done, turn off everything but essential operations, and then we get a check like this a couple times a year for this case of hair under $7,000. Um, one year we made close to $25,000 by the time it was all done. So I'm not saying that. Well, you know, what will be good in our new buildings, I hope, is it might be easier to automatically reduce things. I mean, we manually flip a switch right now with a big transformer, but it's all manual. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's a way to save money. And it's called a demand response program, and they are very common. Um, there's no risk to the district at all. And like I said, if you choose not to turn your lights off, you just don't get your time. But if you throw those switches <laughs> off and that energy goes back to the grid, that savings will be back to you. So was this to, to be part of the program, or is this to actually accept a payment? We're going to pay them for reducing. Oh, okay. And yeah. what is that? Is we reduce for some dates at different times, and so... Oh, so they tell you some new dates. They said uh, here's the like, when it was hot, it was steaming hot for five days in a row. You turn off that at a time, they, they, they're measuring out seven to ten days at a time, so they know exactly when it's coming. They can see what their spike in demand is going to be. So they can tell everybody to turn your switches off at this point. And then the So IDEA relates to pass-through funds that come through the state, get deposited with the intermediate unit, and then get issued to us. Uh, for audit purposes, they have to have certain agreements in place to say we agree to need money for special education programming and not to supplant the get funding we already have in place for special ed education programs. So the, the, we get the money from the state to agree to their terms. So, uh, the IU parent has to have uh, some action. Um, you know, well. uh, the plan comp part H finance revision, I was trying to put up as well. Uh, I believe this is the um, correspondence that expands the. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Okay, so this, this would be, um, this would be, if you recall, we had, whenever we do uh, change orders, we put them in, we get increases your cost and what that calculated for reimbursement on that. This is approval for any of those that come forward. We're also waiting on the piece for, um, the portion of our bond was approved, but the other piece was behind the other one because we approved the bond after. So waiting for correspondence of that as well. So this is, this is that. All in, all in regards to us increasing the amount of money we're going to get the state of the state. Like how they choose money. The plan, uh, Pennsylvania School-Based Access Program. If you recall, this is one of the programs we're worried about losing at the, um, from the federal government. This provides us uh, direct reimbursement for healthcare related services provided to our students. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, psychological services, um, all get a certain reimbursement from the federal government which passes through the state. In our case, um, we use, rather than hire our own person, uh, we share a person at IU with about 30 other school districts, uh, and they do all the filings for us. So this is the motion. We have to have approval each year to participate in the state's program to get reimbursement. We have to follow certain criteria to more audited. We're subject to audit by the federal government and the state government in this program. There's very, very, very strict rules on how this money can be uh, utilized and uh, how, how you account for earning in the first place. So, and then 511, I think uh, Don would be better than me than me to answer. Sure, 511 relates to a tentative class action settlement. Uh, there is a class action lawsuit that's been pending for five years now um, relating to a funding dispute regarding a kindergarten program operated by PA Cyber Charter School uh, during the period 2008 through 2012. During that period, PA Cyber provided kindergarten programming to four-year-olds and collected funds from home districts who had four-year-olds attend that program. A lawsuit was filed on behalf of districts, home districts who did not offer kindergarten programming to four-year-olds, which is most school districts, uh, saying that we should get a refund, we shouldn't have to contribute to charter school education for a program that we don't, for kids that we don't offer programming for in our home district. Um, 344 school districts were involved in that. Churches Valley was one of the school districts. The proposed class action settlement after five years of litigation um, provides that PA Cyber would pay $2.8 million to resolve the case. That money would pay for attorney fees and court costs, things like that, with the balance of at least $2.2 million <laughs> being distributed to participating school districts. Um, in, in the case of Chartier's Valley, over that period of time, the district ended up paying $5,682.96. If the settlement is approved, the district will receive back at least $2,200. Um, could be more than that. It depends on how many districts participate in the settlement and whether the court approves the request of attorney fees or whatnot. So uh, we don't have a lot of money in the game, but certainly every dollar of taxpayer money counts. Uh, our options at this point are either to participate in the settlement or to file uh, pleadings and object to the settlement and things like that. The amount of money that's involved here, my recommendation would be that we participate in the, the settlement and recover the tax and pay our dollars that we can without spending any attorney fees on your part. Do you have some timing on that? Um, I do. There's a hearing, I believe, if I remember correctly, in September where we would be able to decide whether to approve the settlement. No. Any other questions on the consent agenda? Ms. Murphy, I just wanted to give you a chance. I know you're on the phone, but did you have any questions on the consent agenda? Hopefully you were able to. No, you covered. Uh, yep, I was able to follow, so thank you. No, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Okay, great. Uh, so can I have a motion to approve items 5.1 through 5.12? Right? Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> and managed to do it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Elastic. Uh, second, can I have a second? Mr. Kramer? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Any motion carries? All right. Uh, on to our discussion items. So, all, right. all right. So the first item is uh, discuss the board secretary role. And uh, this was a takeaway action item for myself and Miss Murphy uh, from the last board meeting. <coughs> So, uh, okay. All right, so this discussion was prompted by the fact that Mr. Morelli uh, had retired, and the question was what are we going to do, or how do we want to move forward with filling the board secretary role? And the board had talked about perhaps we want this individual to take on uh, additional roles and functions to assist the board in some of the other areas that are important to us as well. And so, uh, as a follow-up to that conversation, Ms. Murphy and I met, and we had a number of pieces of information at our hand that we used to come up with what you are currently looking at. And the first piece of information, obviously, was at the school code. So, Don, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we basically used the school code to really get an understanding of what the responsibilities and duties were of the secretary uh, and, and what we could ask them to do uh, within the purview of the law. And we looked at that in conjunction with uh, the document that Dr. White provided us, which is the uh, roles and responsibilities of a secretary that's issued by PSBA as a guideline. And so we looked at both documents and then separately all of you received an email from, from us asking for your input in terms of what you thought were important criteria, child functionalities, responsibilities of this individual in terms of what we wanted uh, for our board specifically. And based on the input that we received from your emails and your comments, uh, it was fairly unanimous, it was unanimous that uh, two points. One is that this individual should report to the board, and the second point is that this individual should be paid. Okay? And there was a lot of consensus too. We did receive a number of comments in terms of what the job function should be for this individual. And when you see in the one document, uh, in terms of the responsibilities, is that a lot of this is fairly, you know, fairly things that we would expect of a secretary, but it does take into consideration a lot of the things that we've spoken about before as a board. For example, uh, we've brought, we've talked about this action packer, I don't know if you guys recall, a couple of years ago, Jamie Stevenson had put together a document and we were going to say, all right, you know, at board meetings we often tend to talk about a lot of different items, you know, academic, financial, whatever the case might be. Uh, but sometimes with everything that's going on, they don't always get tracked to completion. And that's definitely a priority for us as a board. And so what we did in this, for example, in this job description is we made sure that we included the, uh, the action tracker, executive action tracker. Uh, there's a number of different things that we've included in here as well. Uh, we wanted to give you guys a chance. Some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. So we want to make sure that everyone has a chance to take a look at it. Um, and think about it and see whether you are in agreement with those roles and responsibilities. I do also want to mention that some of you had identified other types of responsibilities such as communication, targeting issues that we've also talked about as a board that we need to do better on. So whether it was communication, um, whether it was uh, having uh, someone assist with our academic metrics in terms of creating dashboards or some other forms of documentation. And uh, I think the consensus, or at least the discussion that Ms. Murphy and I had, and, and Ms. Murphy, I don't want to speak for you, so feel free um, to, to interject at any point, but I think the thought around those additional roles and responsibilities were really meant to come out of a broader discussion by us as a board to determine what our goals really are, right? And so as a preliminary step, understanding what our goals as a board are and then determining what are those other skill sets and responsibilities that we would want an individual to perform and then determining, well, really, does it fit in 
for the secretary position, or um, would it be someone who could function both in performing the secretary role as well as these additional uh, skills that we're looking for as well, or would we want to address it in, in another form or fashion? So I wanted to sort of set the stage in terms of that's, that's how we came up with this document. Uh, and it did include, again, a number of different uh, inputs and comments from board members. And uh, Ms. Murphy had also put together a timeline in terms of how we can achieve our goal of, of uh, moving forward with, it, with finding a board secretary. Um, and again, I want to just stress and emphasize our goal or our process was really to look at what are the skills that are needed. That was really driving how we came up with this document. What are the skills, where are the gaps, what do we need as a board to function in the way that we want to function in. And um, Ms. Murphy, I don't know if you'd like to add additional comments or if you'd like to go to the timeline or if you'd like me to do it, um, if it's easier since you're on the phone, just let me know. Sure, no, Delphi did a great job kind of summarizing the process that we followed and the inputs that we incorporated into with, with what you're looking at now. Um, I don't, is, is the suggested timeline also in front of you or should I, uh, it is. Oh, in front of you, hard copy? It is, it, it is. is. Everyone has copies of the description okay. as well All for right. timeline. Yep. Okay, so really just try to put some mileposts in place with an eye toward having this new position filled by uh, October 2nd, which is the first October, in, uh, first Monday in October. So we can put a, lot, a line in the sand saying, boy, we created this person was on board soon enough into the school year that they could have a real um, impact and be an asset to the board. So backward scheduling from that, um, we want to have the job offer background check completed by in September, which would be we want to have the finalist to present it to the board uh, a couple of days before that, which is you know, back to schedule all the way to, uh, you know, we want to have this job finalized to meet October 2nd. We want to have the job finalized and, and have the job posted in fairly short order. Uh, question. I missed the meeting, but I think it was only one. Did this board approve of this job? No, that's what we're talking no, we're about. Through the process. I know. Yeah. Oh, so, but this job is not approved. No, no, no. Not yet. This, okay. Yeah, right. All right. Because it seems like we're, we're going pretty fast here, and, and the job's not, the position's not even been approved by this board. No, no. So let's take a step back, Jeff, just to provide the context. So the last meeting, and I know it probably feels like forever, because no, it's at the end of June, right? Um, so at the last meeting, we talked about how are we going to fill the board secretary role, well, whether someone on the board should should fill it, whether it should be an, an existing administrative person within the district, or whether we would want to go outside. And so I, myself, and, and Julie um, volunteered to help me in terms of let's look at what exactly does a board secretary have to do, what are their responsibilities. And so our takeaway from that last meeting was to go back and sort of reevaluate that role and what we needed as a board and to come back today, today was our deadline, to show and to share with all of you what what process we took, what we are recommending based on other board members' input, and then bringing it to all of us for discussion and, and consensus on whether we go down this path or not. So we welcome your thoughts. Is there a couple? Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to add that there were a couple of, of touch points with the board uh, over the course of the last few weeks where ALCA specifically asked for feedback from the board. So several board members, actually the majority, have a role in shaping this job, this, uh, job description. Via email, hopefully. So. I guess the problem I have is that Dr. White and his staff were beyond hours to, to come back with this board with a no tax increase budget. Him and his staff and out of the box and, and, and really, uh, I mean, we sweep by. Thank you, Jim. Yes. And you spoke earlier in the evening about possibly hiring 
possibly we're going to need some teachers. Uh, money for this job, I don't think I'm even in question. And I don't know. I don't know what kind of conversation you're talking about, so I have to understand. Right, and, and we're not necessarily talking about a full-time position um, at this point either. I mean, I don't know if I've gotten into specifics of compensation or a full-time position um, or hours. I mean, maybe it's just 20 hours a week. I mean, I, I think our first point of action was even getting consensus on whether or not we all agree that we need an individual like this in terms of being able to perform these roles and responsibilities. I uh, I made about five or six phone calls to some colleagues of mine. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be on the IV board for 19 years and president of three of them. And I, I called a number of the call and none of them have a board secretary. They don't believe in it. They basically what they said, and I, I actually agree, that if you can't handle your own problems, then it really should be elected. So and most of the boards, know. most of the boards do not have board secretaries. Yeah, so Jeff, we're talking about it. Most boards don't have a board secretary other than the traditional. Right, the traditional has served as right. Board well, we're talking about they do not have. Right, I think some of this is stems from you know the tracker thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
career. We're still without a finance manager. So what are our priorities? Is it, are our priorities making sure that we're managed? Or should we be looking, really focusing on a finance manager to make sure that the district's finances are monitored going forward? So I would think that that timeline should be faster than this one, even though that position was not correct, was not budgeted for this year. Is that accurate? That's correct. So I have an issue with that as well. Um, I feel like we're almost adding a layer of bureaucracy, which is, again, I guess I. A lot of things sound good in theory, right? Everything sounds good in theory. However, if you sit back and you have a part-time person with nine people who lead busy lives, bombarding them with requests with this and that, do you really think that's going to be a part-time position? I mean, it, in, do you really think that? That think of all the requests that all of us would come towards and be firing off to this individual. Do you really think that's going to be conducive to putting that person in a position to be successful? I, I'm not sure I'm there on that one. Um, we always want to say we want to be a best practice, right? Best practice also means having the means to do so, right? You don't see a lot of small mom and pop companies saying we're best in practice. That's because their budgets are tight. They can't be best in practice because if they miss on something, they're out of business. I'm not saying we're going out of business, but the large ones that are best practice, I can guarantee you have tried five or six or seven different things that are considered best practice and they probably missed on at least half of them because they can eat those. Um, Mr. Poor brought up what other districts do. I did not look at that. I would be curious. Um, and not all boards, but school boards, because again, we're talking about different dichotomy amongst everybody. Um, we have fans and people place, things like that. The Commonwealth budget is still in flux. We sure we're getting our money. So when are we getting it? I'm sure we're getting it at some point. When are we getting it? Is it gonna be today? Is it gonna be tomorrow? Is it gonna be next June? We don't know at this point. They don't know. Um, again, we say students first, but again, we're hiring someone to bring on to serve nine people. And then I try to think of it in a, again, when I say visionary, in a long-term fashion. So let's face it, boards turn over, right? I think we can all unanimously agree upon that, boards turn over, right? Correct. So the next board that comes in, they're gonna, they're gonna look at this position and be like, why do we have this person? Um, is, this, is this necessary? So, We've now taken, and maybe they said it adds value. But is there really a return on investment? Is it going to be one of those positions when push comes to shove? That when we are really looking at what we're going to have to cut for that next budget, whether we're going to have room for it, is that position going to be at the top of the list to say, you know what, that's a luxury, that's fine. Um, and I did take, also have exception with one of the sentences in one of the emails that said, we should look at what everybody else does that's already currently employed. I have a hard time when I am a, a high level official to be able to comment on somebody that's on the front lines to say, are you sure this is what you do during the day? Can you fit this in your schedule? I'm not in that kind of position. I'm not operational like that. And if you feel like you are from a board level, and you really need to take a step back because you are too operational at that point. If you're really digging down into the trenches, looking at each and every individual and saying, you do this, can you take this on, can you take that on, that's not really our job. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. I don't think anybody wants to do that. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I think we're trying to be less yeah. operational and more of a board of governance, but uh, I mean, I mean, in the case of point, I mean, it, it, like, they just pulled out the meeting notes and said, you know, we had a great conversation about cell phones or whatever, but I didn't make one inquiry in the last four weeks to anyone else about, did anybody follow up on that, do anything on that? Um, it, you know, it, and I, you know, I, you said a couple times, serve nine people, serve nine people. If we make this, these nine people more efficient and more productive, that serves everyone much better. I mean, I'm saying that, you know, my thought is that 
you know, without an admin person, you're, you're grossly inefficient. I mean, I know from starting my own business, you know, it's like when you lose an admin staff and you out and you don't have someone, it, you're really inefficient. I mean, I, I use the example on Pathfinder for it. I mean, if you work small, you know, Pathfinder has a budget of one tenth of this budget, or one, not even one hundredth of this budget, I guess. Yeah, you know, but I have, I have someone there that's a board secretary. When we, when, we, when we leave, and I know that they said, oh, okay, these five things should be looked at. By the time we get back, those five things were all pushed forward and looked at. And we get back the next month, and we say, oh, great, okay, you looked into that. You asked where, how much is that at? Okay, let's go through. Someone, you know, she called around and said, well, what are the other rates for people at least in space? You know, that, that's the type of thing I'm thinking. So a couple of comments, and Julie, I'm a, I, I know you dropped for a little bit of it, so I don't know if you've heard that uh, Mr. Kaczynski had a number of reasons as to why I believe um, he may not be, or I don't want to speak for you, Mark, but in terms of not being um, in favor. Go ahead. Jeff, I came in, uh, and Mark was speaking, and, you know, I, I, I think your point on the, the finance role is a really good one. I think uh, you know, that we do need to think about where does that fit into the priority. So, do we wish to that into the mix as well? And, uh, but I also agree wholeheartedly with uh, Eric's observations. I mean, I've seen that Pathfinder board work and I know that the power of having good, detail oriented um, support. And, and, and you know, I, I, it's unfortunate that we're not all there together because I remember distinctly um, at our last meeting, it was the will of the board to charge Falca and I to go out and work. So it's <coughs> maybe like this is you know, it, I'm not sure. I, I guess I'm trying to reconcile the reaction yeah, I, in I, the room and the will of the board the last time. And I totally agree with you, Julie, because we were just going off on our own and done this. And part of it, um, as I was sitting here listening to, to Mark, is that one of the reasons I think we were tasked to do this is because part of the job, the secretary role, isn't just purely administrative, right? It's not just taking minutes. Part of it is getting signatures, getting the contracts. There, there's certain things that are in the school code, if I'm not mistaken, and there's certain roles that Nick did in his business manager role that wasn't necessarily with his secretary hat on. So now when you take away Nick, who, who did the contracts and did, so, did, did part of his role in his day-to-day -day job, and now he's not gone, and we've got to fill this role, secretary role, who does the admin role and some of this other stuff, who does that become when we don't have Nick, right? And that was, I think, one of the reasons we would have to do this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, there's a change of... And I would go to that, yep. you know, we talked about the, I would just also go to the action tracker, I mean, we talked about that action tracker, there are so many substantive, important, strategy-driven uh, items that are, on that, uh, that are on that tracker, and for whatever reason, we're not making progress on a lot of those things, and it's because of a follow-up, the, the you know, checking, checking milestones, ensuring accountability, follow up milestones, accountability, follow up milestones, accountability. It's just, you know, it's, it's, we, we need some structure. This may not be the right answer, but we need structure to, to get after the things that are important to us. So, so I'll leave it. Well, I'll, I'll mention one other thing too, because I think Dr. White, part of that discussion when we were tasked to sort of go away and look at this was that we weren't necessarily sure if existing admins in your office would have the time, and if I'm speaking, please correct me, but it would be another additional workload that, that will be added to their existing role, and I think there's some concerns about that as well. Well, there's always concerns with their workload, but, uh... But, uh, depending upon what you're looking for, um, you would, I would suggest you, you know, once, once you define specifically what was it, and it goes to the we can talk about the capacity of different folks within the, uh, the district. You know, we also have, you know, again, 
we have to delve into this a little bit too. We use, we have to define what the role is. The board secretary is the board name, okay? But when you get into employee, we have to know specifically what they're doing because we collect the bargaining agreements in place. So if this is non, if it's non-bargaining at work and we have a determination for that, then it gives us some flexibility. It's not us necessarily decides. So once you put together your job description of all the functionalities this person is going to do, uh, PSEA, who represents our clerical workers, they're going to review that job description and they may even ask for determination um, from the state. So if it's a bargaining unit position, it changes the game entirely because it gets posted and it's by seniority. It's not by an interview process you're thinking of in your heads. So, you know, my advice to the board was I think you really need to flush out the, the job duties to this and we may be gone to review it to make a determination as to which employment classification would fit into based off of what you want this person to do. Because that will dramatically change on it. I think I think Brian, that's a good idea. This is um, this is the, the first time I'm seeing this and I appreciate it. Uh, but there are you know, legal questions that, that come up to the questions. I think I would need a better understanding of what we're talking about. You know, there's one that says ensuring compliance with district policy. I'm not sure what that means. We have a policy on anti-harassment. The board secretary could not be the person. Right, no, no. I don't think that was and, the intent. And, and right. So that might be a wording issue, right? There's one directing activities that says related to board meetings. I'm not sure what that means. That might be PSBA language. Yeah, and there are school code <laughs> rules about who's entitled to direct. That was about the PSBA yeah, language, so, right? <laughs> but it, there's a little vague, it, there's some vagueness there. We wouldn't yeah. want the board secretary directing a teacher because that's not their role. And, and that may not be what's intended here at all. Right, but, right. Um, I think the language would have to be looked at. We really would have to dig down. Um, yeah, and I will say as to exactly what exactly what we're expecting this position to do because um, the classification does make it a difference. Or is it bargaining anymore? Is it someone that should be in the Act 93 plan? Is this a public official that the board then can dismiss a bill for us again? Mm -hmm. um, in, in the definition in the school code of um, board secretary that, that I forwarded to you, mm -hmm. there's some really specific things, but it doesn't end with a sort of a generic catch-all, yeah. other tasks as assigned on the That's board. Right. So there certainly is room if the board wanted to assign other tasks, but we need to be very precise as to what those tasks are to make sure that we're not stepping on someone else's toes or in an area where this person should should uh, be at. Um, and, and just the other comment, just as a reminder, Eric, you said nine, and I know you guys always think of yourself as nine. It's really uh, ten, because the superintendent's a board member, just a non-voting <laughs> member. Um, but so there's a lot that go, a lot of detail that goes into this. That um, I think you, if this moves further, you would want to have me involved at some point to make sure that we are tailoring the duties to a board secretary position. I think back to your original question. Once you figure it out duties and give you a classification that we're fitting to, then I could answer the question about capacity much cleaner because it, 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 it varies in the amount of classification. Okay, to that, Mark's finding his questions. Once again, where's the money coming from? Well, right, but I think, so, I mean, sorry, I, I was just saying, I think the purpose of this exercise wasn't to jam some paid position through, but rather to, you know, rather to drill down on what do we need. And you know, the, the answer might very well be some, you know, uh, retired person or past board member or somebody that's willing to volunteer 10 hours a week and say, I'll monitor that task sheet for you and I'll, I'll be the bug in your ears to keep saying, hey, you guys have to make this decision by the 15th and you're behind. You know, let's see, you, you got to get a group together, you got to get your meeting together, you got to do this, you know. Just. And I think to your point, the reason it was paid is for accountability, right? So. 
getting the minutes out within a week, right? We are, we've been approving minutes two months later. Like, that's just not good governance, right? So there, there's an accountability piece, and, and the thought, too, was that this person needs to be paid because we have certain expectations that they need to be able to fill. But once again, where's the money coming from? And, and that's a fair point, Mr. Cora. I mean, I don't think we're answering that question right now. I mean, that wasn't what we were tasked with. I, I understand that, but when you talk about a position and, and you're saying that there's accountability here and they need to be paid, if there's no money, then we're all wasting our time even talking about the job. Yeah, it depends on whether you're talking about it. You're talking about twenty thousand dollars a year, or a collective bargaining agreement person that's a hundred thousand. I don't think any one of us needs to get involved in some, you know, high salary person with a benefit package. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, you know, if anything, we're thinking a part-time person. I can't imagine right now as a part-time person. Part person. Or, part or once we determine what it is, you may say, you yeah, you know what. what? The, I do have the bandwidth in the admin department to do it. But without going through this process, we'll never know. And 90% of this job description is the PSBA. Yeah. So if there's any issues, uh, yeah, there, there might be some bigger issues to um, All right, so not to, to um, belabor this discussion, the, the one point, Julie, I do think would be helpful perhaps we can share uh, our other conversation. And this came to light with some of the other board members who commented on other uh, functions that they thought were critical for our board. And that was, you know, maybe someone who uh, can help with the communication piece, someone who's good with data and can help us parse through some of the academic data, um, things of that nature. And so we actually told those individuals, look, that's not part of what we were scoped with. We were specifically only looking at the secretary role. But at some point, we as a board need to talk about what our needs are overall and come up with what our goals are, and then talk about how we how we meet those goals, and whether it's through a person who can do all of these things and four more things that meet our needs, or, or um, another scenario, but it's a discussion that we as a board need to have in terms of determining what those goals are so we can identify those needs. Um, Julie, I didn't know if you wanted to, to talk to talk to that at all. Yes, yes, so this is uh, the conversation that uh, that we're having now, plus with, with, with the deliberation that Alka and I did leading up to this, this job description and the input of others around the table, plus Tony's email he sent to the board uh, earlier last, late last week, kind of sparked for me as I was thinking about this. It, it's something we've talked about many times. We really need to sit down as a board and craft out two things. What are the long-term strategies? You know, uh, and then what are the goals for 17 and 18 to support those strategies? And, uh, you know, I know Brian, we, we've kicked this around too. We said, you know, with the gush, the, the overall district strategy has been like, years since that, that's been updated. The board has changed considerably since, since that was in place. So I, I envision a process by which we would, you know, take the previous strategy, take a, you know, Tony's input from the email, take some of the things that we know that are important to us, like academic excellence, physical management, transparent communication, and really chart out what are our strategies for the next two to, two to three years, I think five years and beyond is, is, a, is a long stretch, so the next two to three years, and then what are the specific goals that we need to align against to make those, to support those strategies. So, for example, if we have a strategy around uh, physical management, um, you know, what, what would be the specific goals that we would want to have in place to achieve that? So it might be ensuring that, we've, uh, that we that uh, we have the that we have the right uh, oversight of the, the finance functions in the district, um, you know, and making sure that those goals are smart, uh, smart formulate those specific measures, measurable action and to relevance and time. Back. So, um, and then that feeds straight into, you know, the dashboard that we've talked about so many times. Um, and I'm just not, 
where I, I don't think any of us are aware of, we, we all we want to leave with respect to the national which was a line of the goals, which was a line of the strategy. So I do think, you know, there's a much bigger conversation here that we need to have. Agreed. Agreed. So, you know, at this point, obviously, uh, I, I think we've had a chance to hear from many of us around the table. Um, I, I think it would be helpful to have Mr. Stevenson's input and, and Mr. Nazarides. So, you know, I'm going to suggest that perhaps um, Mr. Mazarini knows that, you know, there's, there's an interest in having that broader discussion, Julie, that you were referring to. So, um, you know, unless anyone uh, has other suggestions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out there that we table this because I think our goal is to have maybe that broader discussion at the next meeting, August 8th, uh, and perhaps this can be part of that discussion as well. Does that seem fair? <coughs> yeah. All right. Julie, what do you think? That sounds good. I mean, you just didn't know. See, here's the beauty of just hearing and not listen, uh, <laughs> listening and not seeing anybody. There's a couple of things, there's a couple of folks I haven't heard from um, on this topic. I don't believe unless it was when the line was viewed. So, so Danny and Bob, so, uh, what would you add? Bob is Bob's not here. Bob's not here. Bob's not here. Oh, oh. That's why you didn't hear it. So, no wonder I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sandy's here, so I'll, I'll let you see. Yeah, I was, I was on the phone at the last meeting, so I got cut off at the end of that because I was traveling on the turnpike yes, that day, did, and yeah. I didn't, I missed the end of the meeting, and I, I missed the end of it. Um, so I didn't really learn about all this until oh, we communications okay. from you and Julie that just came in recent days while I was on vacation. So I honestly haven't had enough time to really take all of the information and comment on it at this point. But I think it's a good discussion. I think that, you know, the next board meeting is a good time to for all of us to share about it a little bit more. And, and really, the thought wasn't that we had to decide tonight anyway. I, you know, right. Julie and I were talking about this, and so we presented to you. Everyone can sort of sit on it, sleep on it, think about it, and then we kind of make to see what makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah. Julie, thanks. about the finance manager role. And I, I do want to say that I think that's a critical role that we really should be talking about as well. And I don't know if that's something that the finance committee is probably in the best position to, to opine on, on, you know, whether it's a job description or a timeline similar to what we've done here, um, can, can put together or, or have that discussion. Are going now. Uh, yeah, I have a draft job description. Uh, I'm seeing some other specific other there. It is a problem, but I think it's a point. But again, it is a position that's not in budget. So it's uh, the intent is not to fill a quota. But we've made some other moves that help great funds. Well, and the board also does have a budget for retreats and training, and, and, and I believe other items. I know it's not it's significant. Right, but there's a, there is, I mean, whether it's someone who's who we end up getting a volunteer basis. Uh, we reduced it this year, we didn't have okay. much more, so it was reduced, there's not much. Yeah. I'm just saying that you've been creative. <laughs> you've been very creative, and that's what's gotten us through, so, you know. I'm I think we're going to stop being creative enough. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's right. going to come a point that, right. you know, it makes you more time to hire a creative account. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Small part of that position is going to kill us. It's a boring sum of all. That moving pieces. It's a sum of all. So that's a fair point. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a good discussion. So I think it was worth going through all of it. Those thoughts. Yeah. All right, construction update. The moment we've been waiting for. Okay, I don't have a formal report for this month. I'll have one in two weeks for August 8th. There's a bit of a there are pretty summary that I hand out to everybody. So 
further down, they asked one more month to go here from middle school to get that ready for school. Um, schedule updates from July through the end of July are ongoing. We're really in just uh, discussions and management discussions with those general contractors to keep them on track, uh, to keep their resources doing what they need to be doing with subcontractors, suppliers, uh, procurement of materials, managing crews. Um, the updates will come. Uh, middle school, right now, uh, phase 1A clearly is our priority. Um, a lot of these activities have been on here and have gone from start to finish. Uh, the drywall, there's a couple of things that are just buttoned up and finishing. Uh, a lot of paint, ceramic, ceiling, ceiling tile, going on all three levels. Uh, carpet flooring. Um, really has started this week. Um, the general contractor had to get the building to a condition that was conducive to put some more down. So that probably took it back a week, week and a half to get some temporary measures on site and installed and running. Some carpet had to be placed on the third floor and the static had to be clearly uh, speed up. Um, the power distribution, we had a lot of Permanent panels are terminated and starting to energize some areas that we can do up there. Uh, the big milestone that's coming up here in two weeks is the elevator inspection for August 8th. Uh, so I won't be able to personally tell you how that went uh, that night. Um, one of the goals that they do have um, the district on that third floor is to try to get into a position of completion and some form of punch list so we can start moving in part prior to the 18th. Uh, so we're working with the trades to try to make that happen to get a full jump start on, on that activity. Uh, phase 1B, there's still a lot of stuff happening there as well. Uh, I mean, keep rough and continue. Drywall has uh, commenced uh, the office administration area. The finishing of the drywall is nearly complete. Uh, again, that's kind of a, a back seat added bonus if we're trying to get five star school, maybe a room or two over there um, to help give you more space for school stars. So, again, that would be added to that completion, but the trades are working towards that if possible. Um, outside, the segmental wall is sort of soft, it'll be going in here. Shortly, the curb and sidewalks are ongoing with Gucci. Uh, the they plan to do some paving and fine grading of uh, half of the road in front of the school. And probably from your intersection where your security guard station is back to the bridge. Uh, so put some binder in to make it really usable for mostly walking. Um, you really won't have any travel on that road earlier in the school year. But certainly in the middle school, at this point, the high school, uh, high school check in. Uh, phase 1C is really nearing completion. Final cleaning has started. A lot of coordination has happened with the equipment from the integrated lab. With that being connected and hooked up. Uh, that area should be actually started punchless today by IKM. Um, any luck to be able to start moving in within the week, week and a half of the R roads and the further roads down the integrated map. DMC, which is part of that, we actually punched that out last week and the school started moving uh, the library casework into that space already. So we got a little jump on that area. The uh, performing arts punch list is getting close, it's about 90%. Um, the wood floor, which I didn't put on here, but the dance floor was delivered, so it's going to sit in the space and acclimate for five to ten days. Um, and then we can really start installing that floor. That floor will be done before school. Um, so that's really phase one, phase 1A, B and C, phase 2A. Clearly, if you've been up there on the high school tower, being more down, uh, I'd say it's 
60% down, uh, by splitting the end bill so the circle part. Uh, there's a lot of debris up there that they're hauling out. A uh, big push for that area is what we call the cafeteria service area, where the demolition basically went the whole way down to the basement, uh, which cut off really every utility you can think of that served in the buildings. Um, they start to come back out of the ground with foundation steel is scheduled for August 7. Uh, I believe it really it's only about a week, week and a half of steel erection and detailing to get some structure to make some conduit gas line, water line to bridge the gap. Both the utilities have to be hooked up prior to school. Uh, so that's the most critical part of your summer for the next one there. It's going for the plan. Um, the steel our records actually are on site now prepping uh, angles, angle seats, uh, where the beams sit in the wall of the basement. So when the foundation is done, that's the other site direction to the main foot crossing. Um, also down there are some CMU walls uh, that need to be built for some of the steel. They're down the hole right now doing that work. Uh, on the site, the water line and gas line work is about 95% of the last piece would be the service line that's on the chambers here and uh, the agenda um, that they're moving forward with and then importing with people's gas to get that installed and have people's gas to that work uh, in mid August. Um, temporary corridors, we can call those phase 2A. Um, have started. So if you they decided to do a tour you'll see these sea container trailers that are going to act as corridors um, in certain sections where they can and build wood structure with the roof of the exit doors and some windows to provide some natural light. So it may look kind of interesting, but they're going to be functional. So they've started that activity. There's three tunnels and tunnel ones. Or when I started. Uh, also, phase two, the auditorium, another area where work's occurring. There's two air handling units up in the mechanical <laughs> space that have been installed and are being um, completed within the next two weeks of starting. So, those units should be started up by mid August. Uh, that's B, the, the auditorium space. And for phase two, B, so that back of the house where that first elevator was is progressing uh, with some finishing work of painting should start here shortly so the pump work back there to the schools. So certainly the schedule uh, to date. Um, the financial status, there's six chamberers on the agenda tonight. Uh, I think most of you should be aware of. Uh, that I gave a quick summary of where we're at contingency percentage, which includes <coughs> my sort of pending estimated costs or some other issues. So it's at 1.55% through I think the 18th of July is my last calculation. Um, but it's been hanging around that 1.5 number for the last four or five months. So <coughs> trying to make the risk assessment and that area. So that's pretty all I have was the questions or discussions for the chamber with the Yeah. <laughs> you threw it out as an option. I'm just bad. Is there any discussion related to the chamber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think going through, I mean, I remember most of them from the discussions of the phone, uh, the phone calls. Right. Um, remind me again, I apologize, it's probably on here, but the, the D, the various change orders, what's the largest um, component of that 13th floor? The 13th floor. So it's very about UG change order 11. Uh, that had nine items on there. 
actually a, a variety of credits, um, a couple of credits that are around eight thousand to nine thousand dollars. And then there's the biggest item on there, um, some shaft wall or duct shafts, um, four shafts that need adjusted. Um, that didn't work how it was laid out in the drawings. So we had to do some more of a time and material. Uh, those are two items there, at eight and nine, that have about 17,000. Um, there's three credits on this change. Uh, is he a uh, designated, is he an uh, so yeah. hopefully we'll make that and then, um, and the number four, that's the, the change in the grading. Is that, that's related to that, the electric conduit, is that what that is? No, that was um, just an issue with the grade around the middle school being adjusted. Um, Somewhat in some oh, areas, some areas area. got deeper uh, in a, a sort of linear adjustment. A couple of these are the smoke evacuation and all that. We had that discussion at the last yeah. meeting. We stayed after and talked through that. So, is there a couple of those? Were you just going to go through all the change orders? Because I know there are separate items, but I didn't know were you getting all your questions out? Or yeah, I know. Mean, yeah, I, I remember our conversations and presentation, and we talked through all the. You know, that was that's a couple of those. And we talked about the abatement of the insulation on the two tanks that were yeah. that no existence. So we already covered that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay. I, mean, I, have no I either ask the one Wednesday call or talk to the one. So. Anyone else have questions? So, just I just had a few questions. Um, sure. Schedule wise, middle school, I know you said that um, you were in good shape, but I just wanted to confirm that do you foresee any issues with us? Not meeting the date, and if so, do we have contingency plans? At this point, they were all primed to meet the date. It doesn't mean they may coexist with you guys as you move in um, as they finish up the experience. It's going to get so what done. What does that mean? Sorry. I... It means that they may have to do some work wherever, why the school is still going to move some uh, furniture in. Uh, there may be some lights missing, there may be the ceiling out, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're a school. Um, so not, no issues from a safety perspective or disruptive? If there will people. be, we'll, yeah, we'll make sure it's not a safety issue. I walked through the middle school. Could you please speak up? Sorry, I can't hear you. So he, Jason just said there was no safety, there would not be any safety issues in the school zone. And that's partly because the Collier Code Inspector will walk through before we get an occupancy permit. Yeah. But I, I walked through the middle school today, and um, you know, I, I'm very comfortable in the classroom areas, but they'll be ready to go. <clears throat> you know, I, I think that what you're going to see is some rough areas, particularly around the commons, the cafeteria area. This is my guess, not the brush background, but just looking at where things are. Um, and I, I could foresee punchless things being done in the evenings yes. after we've arrived. So, um, but you know, when I look at it, most of the cabinetries in most of the classrooms, it looks like the carpet's about to go down. It looks like the painting is done. I'm sure there's touch-up things when we get punchless to Yeah, but, but you know, as far as you know, having electricity, having our, our digital apparatuses, it looks like the, the cabling's all in. And Scott Kelly and his crew have been busy, so I. You know, my fear is workforce to get the move done in a timely manner um, because we need to get custodial retirement, as you recall. And uh, you know, some people are temporary workforce to meet, some are not going to be at the end of the summer. So, uh, you know, I just spoke with Mr. Gold today about giving him some latitude to hire people as he needs, particularly for second shift, because temporary workers, as you recall, were saving in our moving company. Uh, but, I think the scramble might be less of a construction issue as it is 
moving two floors of furniture up one elevator, uh, you know, and the things have to run continuously to get everything up. You know. right. so we really have, in a perfect world, from the date they're supposed to hand it over to us to the day the teachers show up, it's eight days, including the weekend. In a perfect world, all the teachers' furniture and boxes will be in the room when they arrive so they can start unpacking and be prepped for the first day of school. And so, you know, we're going to be trying to prioritize making sure we have critical things in the right spaces. But if you walk through our gyms right now, it's not really a choice of what you move first. It's the closest thing that doors go because of that act. So it's, it's really, uh, you know, anyways, my gut is when I walk through there, it, 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 it's going to be the movement that's going to be the challenge. And so it's going to be us committing uh, the extra workers in the evening to, to get it done. And, uh, I, I say evening because we might get the uh, we hiring student workers. To say you still do the students. Yeah, or, we may actually go back to some of our teams here that are now back in session saying, you know, these eight days in the evening, uh, <laughs> you have a lot of kids. Could you help us out? Yeah, right. You know, so hopefully some of the uh, young folks, uh, they're very excited about helping. So that was one of the ideas when we were trying to get the third floor first. Uh, you know how much the elevator can be used. Um, so the plan clearly is to have that elevator functional on August 8th. Uh, and that third floor is the point that it's acceptable. It's, it's punch listed, and then you guys are comfortable moving in to help that process. I know we've talked about some other creative ways to get such a second floor. Right. Um, Work. So we're going to do that as well. Essentially, the art terrace on the second floor is so great that it's up to the art terrace. So, what what are you considering your critical date? August eighth or eighteenth? Eighteenth. Eighth is the Yeah, it's the elevator. Right. Um, again, there are plans to get around that if we can't do it tomorrow. If we fail the session, we have to hire an operator and we still have to use it. We just have to pay that person. But think of that one. So if the elevator company fails the inspection, we have to hire the elevator company to operate the elevator. Yeah, but it's not necessarily <laughs> the elevator. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I understood there. <laughs> well, it could be leveraged with their responsibility. Depends on why. Yeah, because <laughs> the, the, the plumber and <laughs> electrician. Uh, and we can't play around. Play around. I think it's a good idea that we talk to some of the athletic teams. I, I mean, I know you know, you know the football teams in, in session. I know the hockey team is in their off ice conditioning and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's what I thought. We, you know, and my, one of my thoughts was because we posted and we've exhausted uh, those posting. One of my thoughts was to reach out to the booster organizations and see if dads and kids wanted to come and have a couple of move nights and just make the donation straight to the booster organization. I'm in. I'm in. We'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get a lot of bodies to move things right now. Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then they get the first look at the school. Yeah, right. As I say, as I say. <laughs> Do you want to look at it? You have to move stuff. <laughs> Question, right? That goes for you too. I don't think the post because that's not going to free pass. <laughs> Jason, on the performing arts area, the punch list being approximately 90% completed. I mean, at what point can we be done with that? Given that a lot of that's the a lot of that's the main is chain order work. So technically, it, you can call them <laughs> categorize the punch list, but it's their list. So there's some chain order work that's still filtering it. Yeah, and they can't get to it. We have we've used that as a storage area for middle school. Okay. So it's not the kids thing. They just can't. They just can't get to. It. Yeah, the last time we talked about it, there was a decent push to the Mayor Dickey in there. Uh, this is one of our specific things of that nature that drives done. Um, so they was aware to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. So right now it's more of a choice. Far away, just said, yeah, we can change our workload for a couple of habits. Um, I did want to share, Mr. Stevenson had uh, provided some comments, so I just kind of I wanted to share them generally. I know they'll be back August 8th, so, um, you know, if we can't address them today. I hope that we can bring some conclusion to them on that date. But uh, again, around reconciling construction budget uh, with his dashboard, I, I know he's been 
he's been updating his dashboard on a monthly basis to make sure it's, it's current, but for some reason there seems to be some kind of discrepancy where both, both sets of numbers aren't matching up. Uh, the other item is schedules. Uh, again, he expressed concern in terms of uh, meeting the middle school schedule and uh, whether there's a contingency plan if one was needed. And then uh, the next item was around construction payments, uh, looking for, again, the format with some key items uh, such as the total, total of change orders, previous payment, current payment, balance, percent complete. Uh, energy goals, I feel like we talk about energy goals all the time, um, but we don't seem to have necessarily any kind of resolution uh, in terms of what we're doing. We, we did set them, we started out with setting them, but in terms of um, what our goals are, the dashboard, um, time dashboard to the utility meters to track the EV by energy. Uh, you know, and I'm even just thinking about the last, a couple uh, construction updates ago where we had, where we talked about the energy um, testing, but I'm not quite sure whatever happened. So we talked about things that get dropped, like that was one of them where I thought you guys were gonna go back and look at some items and come back to us with some information and, you know, I don't know if that happened or not. Well, I think uh, Rob, and I was thinking that he did go back um, on some of those questions I've done before and done on. Did you please speak up? Um, just saying that I think last time Rob from Building Performance Architect did follow up with some of the questions from the board meeting that night. Uh, but I'll have to go back and double check that buddy answers to some of those questions. Uh, but as far as his tests and the work, there has been some um, work completed since those tests. So we did another test, um, I believe, a week and a half ago that we need to see the report on that. Um, so that should be issued soon. Uh, and were those tests just, were those accommodating some of his recommendations or were those actual tests? Actual tests on areas? part of the building. Okay. Um, is sort of the same condition as the first test, so that he anticipated the results to be similar because uh, there's some work that was incomplete. Uh, he accounted for some areas with barriers, this plastic barrier, so that report should be issued soon. I, had it already. I, I might have missed it on vacation for the last five days, so I'm not sure. I and has one of the other discussion items at that time was looking at how we could do things better when we tested at the high school. So did anything come out of that in terms of how we either, you know, whether it's timing and when the testing occurs, because it's, we've now gone through this once with the middle school, we have a better idea I, of how to. I, I think that the second test for preparation went better, um, but it was in the same condition as the first, the drywall was already in place. Um, but for the high school, can we can we do it at the right before the dry rock goes up? Or are we gonna do anything? I guess my question is are we gonna do anything different at the high school based on what we've learned at what's happened at the middle school? We can try to implement it. Um, but it could be a schedule issue. We just might not have the time to stop drywall, which would affect the overall schedule of the So let's talk about that. This has been a priority of ours for a very long time. So how can we manage manage this? How can we manage these, these priorities? I don't know what we call conflicting or competing priorities. It's all with an eye towards the end game, which is well constructed, highly efficient building. So how can we accommodate that? Well, the, the prime contract, the contract of our contract right now with the whole process. I think we talked before a few months ago, the issue was it wasn't pre minute that you didn't specify that you had to wait to do your first test and then start to um, So they are cooperating to the extent to try to do that. Um, but I'll stand here and tell you that if you tell them to stop, you're going to get noticed. 
So we don't want to go down that path. Um, so we're trying, they're going to try to cooperate as best they can to accommodate the tests, but not to affect the suit. So who's advocating for us? We are. We're, we're there advocating for you, Julie. Um, the part of our job as well is to tell you uh, the outcomes of some decisions if you want to tell somebody to stop, uh, to affect you in another way. Um, but at the same time, we want to try to get these tests done in the most efficient manner. Um, then you get good results out of them as well. So, everybody understands the goal of the districts. Uh, I think before we even talk about just having uh, Rob involved has raised the level of awareness of the product you're going to get. Uh, so I think that's been a benefit to the job I've seen in the last year. Uh, the testing clearly is a challenge of how we're all wanting to test it with really the schedule. Um, and we've been working toward that to give you the best time to test and not the later in the front. Okay. When was the last time you engaged with Rob on this? When was the last time you talked with Rob on this? Uh, before I went on vacation, it was an hour last week. Um, the teachers and tests, I think, the Thursday prior. So there needs to be some follow up on with him. So, I mean, I guess a good example is we've been discussing it with the test, the final test. Tech Ed. Um, there's different ideas. Some of the ideas are to wait um, maybe even a year to do the next summer when the connection to that <coughs> is complete, when all the exterior punch list items are complete, and we've had a chance to really address any potential new areas. So then that test truly can be the idea of what that space is going to form. Or we try to squeeze it in this summer that you may have some areas that aren't fully completed. We just need to have the word threshold missing. Or the end of the core is just plastic and drywall that may have some open gaps. There are had been some discussion on when to do the final text. When will the initial test occur again with the high school? What's that? The high school. High school initial test. What's the initial test? Well, the tech that we already did. With the learning tower. Uh, with the learning tower. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of structure to build. Here, <coughs> framing, all those curtain walls. It may not be until the next. So as far as the next update of the August 8th meeting, can we we have the results of the next test of middle school, right? Yeah, I can follow, follow up that. tomorrow and okay. make sure it's good. Okay, I mean, I think uh, hopefully Mr. Master and Mr. Stevenson will be at that meeting as well, and um, you know, we can we can address it in a little bit more detail, but perhaps that second test might give us insight into if anything you guys changed or testing conditions changed really made an impact? Really, or are the other steps that were taken made an impact with the results that you guys obtained? Julie, did you have other thoughts? <clears throat> um, no, I think that's a good step. You know, there's just a, a couple of points. Here, you know, this is, and you were kind of touching on it earlier, Al, but this is the kind of thing that having more accountability around the actions that come out of this, out of our meetings, which is the reason that we're even you know, thinking about bolstering our process with the board secretary is uh, you know, part of the first part of this, it's reflected in the first part of this conversation. Um, and then, so that's all I want to share. For the board to kind of think about 
that the, the kind of thing that we would want more accountability and more rigorous. And I guess just for the uh, PJK team, just would love for you guys to continue to think creatively about how you can manage our energy and our need for the testing. Understood. Continue to work with Rob and uh, and the crime to give him the best environment to test. Uh, and that's been the goal, really in line and trying to filter that down to the primes. The feedback to test and the conditions that aren't conducive are not going to get any results that's worthwhile. Um, so that's kind of been a challenge going with Rob. Any other comments, questions? Um, Julie, thank you for that. I, you know, I do agree. Um, I feel like sometimes we talk about the same items at every meeting, and it's hard to track that progress on um, being able to say, yep, we've, we've accomplished or completed something or not. So we'll continue to work towards solving that issue as well. All right, so on the change orders. Yeah. Six point four. Yeah. Okay. So unless anyone has um, specific comments on a, on a specific change order, I think the way we'll probably do this is just take a motion for uh, all of them collectively. So just one last time. Any specific questions on an item? No. Okay. I, I'm going to share. I'm just going to disclose right now that um, I'm going to abstain from those change orders and. I just want to share my reasons so that you guys are aware of it. And part of it is um, I just don't feel that I have a good handle in terms of the impact on the financial overall uh, budget and the scheduling that these change orders um, are related to. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, Jason, but just from my perspective, I feel like we're Again, it's, it's an item that's come up before. We've sort of talked around and danced around it in multiple meetings before. But um, when it comes to these change orders, we get, we get a number of them, which I understand is typical of projects, large projects. But I don't, ha I don't feel that I have the right context of how each one <coughs> impacts our total budget and impacts our scheduling. Um, and, and having that big picture is critical for me. Well, these require five votes to cast. <laughs> Jason, yeah. respond to that. Sorry. Is there any consequence um, if these do not pass and they are placed on the August 8th agenda? You know, what, if there's any risk? I would say yes. Can you share what that risk would be to us? Um, specifically to any of these the service gas line work, the right ones. Which one is that one? The, the schedule and related issue, uh, item 9. Which, which one was the one you just referenced? Uh, it's right on change order 11. Power item 3. Nine. I mean, is, is, it, is it fair to say that if some of these don't get approved, you have an incomplete and non-functioning potential buildings on our yeah, end? Yeah, there's. I mean, there's there's more than just a skip. There is an impossibility of having a functioning facility. I think if some of these are not approved because of incomplete potential systems. I think that. There's, yeah, and, and so a lot of these errors and emissions probably categorized as that. So, so I think what we try to do every time we discuss these is give you, within the context of your overall budget, where they align with the contingencies, so that you get a good idea of that. And I think that's fairly accurately discussed almost every Wednesday meeting. Um, that, that we actually have a conversation. <clears throat> I also think the schedule impacts are discussed in that we're still informing you that in our professional opinion, 
we're confident that your schedule is being met per the latest update that is, is provided and per our expertise as to where we're at in the project. <clears throat> that we do not see a significant impact on the schedule based on, on these items. So I, I don't know what, what else it is that you, we can pro possibly provide to you to get you to not a saying and to vote, but I, I feel we've been fairly prompt with those discussions and updating you as, as often as anybody ever wanted. In fact, probably more frequently, and I, and I, and I respect you for that, than any other project in that we have these every Wednesday discussions. So I, I would hope, I'm somewhat surprised to hear that someone may not be totally up to speed because I, I, I think that it's been pretty, pretty transparent. So I, I think the, the unfortunate thing is if we don't approve some of them, I think we have a, a non-functioning facility which concerns me, let alone a schedule impact that's of utmost concern. Because everybody has been busting their tail um, for a typical summer crunch, and, and, I, and, I, and I respect the contractors for, for doing what they've been doing. I hate to see that train come to a screeching halt. That's all. Well, I appreciate that. I think you know. Thank you for your comments. I think a couple things. One is the Wednesday calls. I think are great. Um, I unfortunately can't make those um, due to a work conference. So. Um, you know, I appreciate the fact that you have those. But I think we've talked about this at many meetings at length about just sort of having this one pager. And I know we do this perhaps on the monthly, the monthly updates, you know, where you have the charts and you show the risk and, and, and all of that. But I think where my concern comes in is that on multiple occasions there's been comments from, um, you know, other board members as well in terms of potential discrepancies and trying to get the numbers to match. And it's just hard for me to I mean, do my own diligence. My it's comment my own on that, I, I think those discrepancies are soft cost related and not construction related, um, which we can try to address in the future. But uh, I believe the discrepancies are related to that, not change order related. Um, and I did issue a one page something maybe didn't get to you. Um, are you talking about the one that we have here today? Uh, you're talking, yeah. You were, that was the June 30th. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That wasn't in the Friday. Friday. No. no, no, okay. Yeah, Friday. June 30th. That was my concern. So, yeah, so that yeah. summary right. so, so, had an issue. So, here's my concern, right? So, that's not real time to me. So, June 30th, right? So, it's been almost a month. So even if I go by the document you provided today. Well, let me stop right there. The executive summary is the payments to the The other one, which is attached to every Wednesday phone call agenda that I'll report to get, is almost two days. Two days. And that's This one is the 18th, because I was on vacation, so I didn't get to adjust it until last week. OK, so when we're talking about <clears throat> Uh, right here, um, G and H, when we look at the financial state status. Yes. So maybe if you talk me through that a little bit. Um, so yeah, that, so that. how much of the project is still pending so that we know how much of this contingency we have left to tap into? So I guess that's the perspective I'm missing as well, so, right? So G and H is construction contingency when the project commenced was 4.15%, so $3.2 million. So I have a G on the hand that I had tonight. Uh, I'm projecting right now, real time, about 1.55% of that is being spent. And that includes um, a, a value that I have estimated in pending amounts. It also includes the six change orders that are on the agenda tonight. You, 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 I just want to put on the record, Bob Curdy has joined me uh, via phone. Hey, Bob. <laughs> so, if all my pending estimate items risk assessment are executed, you spend 1.2. Three, three, four hundred dollars in the change orders. 
So what I had mentioned earlier, that 1.55% has hovered around the 1.5 number for the last four to five months. That's due to stuff that you've executed, the risk assessment items that I put in my log that are going to come down track if I need to. So I have age, what's that? Right, and what's the percentage of the project that's completed? Depends how you look at it. The high school, um, I believe, is about 35 to 40 percent. The middle school is up over 64 percent. So, how can I tell whether or not we're on track for having enough money in our contingency funds based on those percentages? That's tough. One to ask because we don't know what unforeseen items we're going to run into. Um, however, the risk on the middle school is dwindling every day um, because work's being completed and work's being put in place. Right now, the volume of your work is at its peak with the middle school and the high school. It'll start to go down, which hopefully lessens the risk. The challenge there is you have two more additions in the economy. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, I, I mean, I'll just, when I pencil through, when I look at that, I mean, I, it, it, you had a $3.3 million contingency to get to an $82.87 million project. Then, you know, we have these change orders today, going to 233. You know, so that contingency reduces to the 206600 that's left here because it's now been distributed to these line items, but you know, and with 151,000 pending. Um, so you know, the way I look at that is, you know, if I'm looking at a, a, a project here at June 30th, I'm 65% down with my middle school, I'm 35, 36% down with my high school, and, and I've used about a million two thirty-three. And have two million left to finish forty percent and sixty percent. You know, it, to me, and knowing that we, we have a little bit to come out of the well, we still have to come out of the ground, which is where most of the risk is. Right. It, you know, it, I, I'm comfortable with that. I mean, everybody looks at this, and you know, those contingency numbers. I mean, when you're when you're budgeting that, doing it in you know, private industry every day. I mean, it, you you have to look at that money as you know. It's 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 spent. If you can save it, that's a big win, it, you know. But there's so many unknowns. I mean, the construction is such a difficult task, and, and and you come across it, and particularly when you bring a new out of the ground and, and connecting it to existing, that that's really really difficult to 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 account for everything. Um, I, I mean, I can tell you that. I'm comfortable with it. I mean, I, that's all I can say. I, I mean, that's my own opinion. But you know, I know these guys. I've, I've you know, the, the number of projects that I've what else you know, either been involved in in the past with PJ or you know, talked with other projects that have been going on. That's you know, right. That's I'm right. That's where I'm going to go with this. You have to base a lot of this confidence level on historical information and historical data. I think you are in a good position. We, we, your, your setup of your contingency was well established. It fell in line with historical data uh, with other projects of similar fashion. I, I agree with your assessment of where you're at in, in, in relation to the percentage of work that's in place and what you have left. Keep in mind that that does not mean that we're just going to not continue to do our due diligence to continue to find cost savings measures to build that contingency or do what's right for the district every single day. But with that said, yes, there are other risks that are out there. And if I had 100% confidence level in telling you what I really felt about that was accurate, I certainly wouldn't be in this business. I'd be on the stock market somewhere making a lot more money. So I can only base that on our risk analysis on historical data. And, and we felt comfortable with the position that you're at right now. And we continue to pursue other cost savings items as we go through this. All right, well, thank you for that. I appreciate sure. that. Um, <clears throat> thanks for the insight. I think that was helpful. Um,
Um, all right, we're going to call for a vote. We're going to do a roll call vote. And, uh, yeah. No, we didn't. So let's do, we're going to do these collectively. So um, can I get a motion to approve item 6.3 through 6.7? Six point eight. Oh, sorry, eight. Yep, yeah. six point eight. So moved. Mr. Kramer, moved. Second. Second. Mr. Kaczynski, and then we'll do a roll call vote. Mrs. Murphy. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Murphy. Yeah. Mr. Kaczynski. Yes. Mrs. Patel. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to abstain. I appreciate the comments um, PJ did, uh, but on this one I'm just going to abstain. Mr. Chor. No. Chora. Mrs. Zalesny. Yes. Mr. Kramer. Yes. Mr. Kearney. Mr. Kearney, yes. 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 Five, one. Okay, motion carries. Motion carries. Five, five yeses, one no. All right. Um, While we're removing the public comment, can you say that this is great? Yeah, thank you for joining. All right, thanks. All right, uh, public comment. Anyone would like to come up for public comment? All right, if you could state your name and sign. Uh, for the Commission Drive 318. I am the past president. Sally, let me just interrupt you real quick and state the obvious. We have someone here reporting today. So Thank you. <laughs> um, I, first of all, I, I just I want to say that I'm very glad to see, even though they're just protected source, that the source um, that has been something that really, as, as the CFC have really worked hard to get not just the body to and to um, do their diligence in those areas. My comment is, is going to be this. With the budget having passed without a governor's signature, where is this going to put us as far as evaluations for the staff? With these numbers, with the possibility of the keystones no longer being considered part of those evaluations, do we have any? Yeah, we don't. We don't know. Um, we're proceeding as if Act, as if Act 82 is in full force. Now, if you recall, the contingency in Act 82, because when Act 82 started, some of the evaluation components were not available. Correct. Then any piece, if you remember, it's a pop. Right. So assessment and all those things take up half the pie space evaluation. Any piece that is not available from the state will be turned back to the clinical observation or the differential evaluation system. That's okay. what the code says. So there's a, there, there is a, a piece there, data points are available. But I would suspect that we would get guidance directly from the state on it. Right, because our evaluations are all due to be signed in October. Right, but, I, I, but with that said, we have the data from 16, 17 coming right. So if the, the key stones end tomorrow, the data is here. Okay. That, I, that's just something that I would ask to get some clarification on. A few other issues that, we, as a union, we just um, want to know. Uh, Sarah, is it Farbacher? Mm -hmm. F-A-R-B-A-C-A-E-R? C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-
Um, as to the class size increases, um, that's a great problem to have. But for, for our district, that means people see the value of what we're doing here. They want to be here and they want to be part of that. So that's really exciting. Um, but again, we have great things going on here at Shelby Valley. Um, I would just caution that those decisions be made as early as possible during the hire. Uh, if you remember, we had a situation where we had late two years and that really was a problem. And uh, there was a great, I think, the service on the children not here. So if we're going to make those decisions, we need to make them sooner rather than later um, for a smooth transition for those folks and for the children. Because those little ones, some of them don't even they don't have to type of shoes, they don't have to 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 to that's an unloved consideration. Um, now, let's get to the important stuff. I've never done that. <laughs> you know you what? Ask the folks who laugh. <laughs> when I walk by today, the good news is there's a window frame in the hallway and it goes to your room. So awesome. we're getting close. There's a roof. Awesome. <laughs> That's the important thing. So that's right. Nice. <laughs> all right. Um, that's, I really, that's all that I have to say um, as far as questions. But I, I want to go back to the concern of finances and marketing. You always present it so well for, for me because I'm a terrible financial person. I, I'm just like, he comes in and goes out. <laughs> but I, 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 I really challenged this board. We didn't raise taxes. And that was a choice that was made based on the information that was given to you. And that's fine. I, I fully support that. I also want to make sure that what we do financially is the impact going to benefit the children on this district. And we are looking at probably hiring some teachers through attrition. We have lost, we have lost positions that people take on more responsibilities. Um, and I understand that. And that, you know, we're all about that. The union's all about picking up and, and doing what we need to do. But I want to make sure that you understand that we were all asking you to lower our budgets by 15% for this school year, which we did. And I've been sitting at home personally sitting and listening to you, so you're very, very careful about the selections. And that's going to have an impact on my kids. Not as tremendous an impact as if they would do about science supplies for years, those sorts of things. But it's still an impact. And if you're going to hire a board secretary, how is that impact going to be felt by the children? That, that's, that's my only concern. And I do think that we need to have, I'm retiring for years, so long term budget five years, I'm not here for you. But that is necessary process and have to go through. And, and I really like that vision, and I think that's something that, if, if nothing that's this work, should be looking towards that. You know, we have to look towards that future. So I can say thanks. Thanks, so thanks. thanks so much. Look on diagonally to see. Uh, it's 
nothing jumped out horrifically at, at me. Uh, but the one thing it did jump out of, the yeah. other one here, is uh, this one. Yeah. Um, for example, and I know you don't not see this in front of you, but um, uh, middle school, but third grade math went down by 3.4% so initially. Was, but the context of it was our baseline year was 578 the second year, we went to 75.1, and then our, our new third grade was 71.7. So the net game over two years was 15.6. So, you know, I'm trying to go context over, uh, trying to compare to baseline. Yeah, so uh, only area, if you will, trend to baseline that went down was eighth grade science. And I, I think we have some good ideas on why that happened. I'm not, I'm not really prepared to get into it tonight. Um, but, you know, there's other anomalies that uh, I want to look at, particularly eighth grade ELA, um, but, you know, I think you know, this is really driving to Mrs. Schultz really nail on the PSA, she And so you have a transition, so I, I think that there's some catch up steam on that type of stuff. So I, I think we're in a, um, a much better place than we were, um, but I it buzzes me forward. It, 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 this work with IFL is mathematics. <coughs> ELA is good, but the mathematics it, it, it's really the IFL is really making a profound difference. Talking mathematics. So I, I don't, you know, it's expensive, but they, they challenge our people in a very professional way. And uh, those involved with it will tell you. I mean, you can correct me. A year ago, this board meeting, <coughs> after, I don't know how many angry phone calls I got. If you recall, I think we rescheduled 18 teachers. Right? And then we got us to the parent phone calls right after that. Um, and the teachers said, we're going to do what with who? With the IFL, they've been very skeptical. And I think that's really, you know, they bought in in a very short amount of time. So imagine if you're not. When, when, when your team came and talked about the progress and the uh, double math, there was some indication that they, they did something they wanted to continue. Yeah, and, and we're not for all kids. It's still a place for many of the kids, but the, the reality, reality is your, your, your students who are supporting very successfully, your advanced kids, if you will, um, they didn't reap the instructional benefit of uh, the, the intensity of two math periods. Uh, and we were afraid we are going to lose too much ground in science, particularly uh, computational science. It would be better to integrate those, into those kinds of activities. And particularly when you walk through the new building, the idea of the project-based learning integrated learning environment, a lot of these, the idea of a period, I hope starts to disappear between you're on the team time, because the idea is you might ebb and flow out of classrooms. It has become most noticeable when you walk through the reading and the language arts room, which we teach a separate subject, but I mean, how can you separate the two? You know, they all have class for walls, and most of the teachers really plan to have those walls open most of the time because they see it as learning centers that have been flowing back. That's the contagious uh, innovation that we want around project based learning and putting this in place. So, even when you saw the results, you feel like the decision to target the double math is still the right decision? For some kids, yes. You know, it, it, I look at other, our other peers, I mean, it wasn't done in absence, we just said, hey, let's do it. We call them other districts that are having a lot of success with massive. We see your curriculum and how much instructional time are you right. getting into it. Right. And we found we didn't have the instructional time for the same amount of time. They still continue that. Not for all kids, certain kids. It, it changes. So it fluctuates based on district to district. So some some do, some don't. But I see the majority, the vast majority of people don't have that. It's, it's a slot group that does not. And then, and then, um, I'm sure you guys want to hear more from that. And then, the uh, change in the human resources approach in terms of how you're going to line those out. Just out of curiosity, will that new sheet be also attached to the public document? It should be online. I mean, you should be able to see it online. There wasn't anything online tonight, and then I think it wasn't well, attached. It should, be, it should be a public document. So yeah, well, that's what I thought. I just wanted to yeah. double check. But I mean, today's the first time that I go. Uh, and then with respect to the uh, board secretary, we'll let you guys talk about this now a few meetings. Just you know, my comments since I'm here. Um, I, I think the challenge over time is to 
figure out what the goal of this down to a high performing board. I mean, Jeff, I've heard you say a number of times this is the highest performing board we've participated in in the history of Chartier Valley. I think that's right. I think the question for you all is you consider what the secretary is. Does that elevate your performance even more? Does it provide more top spin to the ball? Um, and then salaries going on, how does it benefit kids? I think it's a great question. Um, I think you wrestle that. Mm -hmm. And ask yourselves, what is the role of the school board specifically to advancing the interests of the children? Um, I, I think I have a good idea of what that is, but I, I think it's important, especially if you opt to go with this, that we have the answer to that. I think it's a fair question. But it, it should make you all more productive. It should allow us to do more work faster. And if that's not the case, then I think it's a real question about the application costs. But the higher performing any group is, the more infrastructure needs to continue performing at a higher and higher level. And this to me would be infrastructure. Now when it comes to PSBA or school code, I, I can't find anything that says this position should be made other than um, a, a responsibility simply to the board to do this business. I've, I've never found. I think over time, Chartier Valley used this role board to support administrative purposes and administrative objectives. And that's something I think we evolved to over time. It just was part of our evolution as a district. I think now we have a chance to reconsider uh, what the role is for. And in the school code, it reads as though it's a, it's a darn driver. It rolls like it it, 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 it it reads like it's a driver role, which I don't see us looking at in any way, shape, or form. But in terms of the, the language in the school code, it is a very needy position with a lot of um, not, not necessarily decision making authority, but certainly um, authority, whether it's signing checks or putting out bids. Um, so it, it, it seems very different from what we've done in the past and what people were talking about doing here, which I think indicates the Doc's point that is a little bit up to what you all decide we should be recognizing that there are some guidelines and things that are acceptable and appropriate. But I encourage you to figure out how to put more tops on the ball because you're running hard, you're running fast, you're making a lot of great improvements. Um, so I, I think that's great. Um, and then the videotaping. So is that going to be available online? That's not us. Is it me and Matt? Good dog. Videotaping, I believe he's putting it online, but it's, it's not our genesis. Yeah, we yeah, online. Yeah. Where? YouTube. Huh? Bridgeville.org. Oh, Bridgeville.org. What is it? Will you be at every meeting? No. When you feel like it. Yeah. Yeah, could you pick a meeting where I'm not presiding at the <laughs> first time ever, please, next time? <laughs> you know, actually, you can run out of the loop. Would you take a, a still of her? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, just yeah, take that out. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. It's a nice service. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your comments, Steph and Sally. I appreciate that. Any other public comments? All right. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> so, good. Get your fingers. Get your fingers.